Well, it looks like rumors that Tesla's Austin-made 4680 battery cell Model Y might be sandbagging its range could be true. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So we're gonna start with Monroe Live. They just did a initial like just sneak peek at the 4680 batteries that are inside the foam pack that's part of the structural battery pack. I will of course leave a link to the entire video in the description because you should definitely watch it. There's a lot of intriguing details. It's an amazingly difficult process they've had to go through. They've had to use something called a dry ice blower to try to blow off the plastic foam on the outside, which I didn't even know existed up until they mentioned it. So anyway, it's pretty amazing stuff. And at this point, they've only got one part of one of the battery pack modules stripped away so you can see it. It's going to take them forever to get this thing torn down completely. Anyway, I want to play a little clip here because Sandy is pretty blown away by what's going on. Seems to be a continual thing whenever he deals with Tesla he's always like oh my gosh I can't believe that they're able to do yet more stuff that I didn't think was possible so let's take a look at that first I will tell you this is a lot different than what I was expecting I'm again I'm dazzled by the uh, the technology that Tesla has cranked out on this this looks different again than anything we've ever seen I mean there's a lot of similarities it's got batteries and it's got connectors and and um, contactors I should say and um, and bus bars, but at the end of the day, every time you look at something from Tesla, it looks like, well, this doesn't even come from the same company. The only thing that's similar is, like I say, it's got batteries and separators and conductors and, uh, and bus bars, but at the end of the day, it's, it seems like, it seems like they, they just, they, they don't have a, they, they don't have a limit on their capacity to invent. Yeah. So as you heard, Sandy is dazzled by the technology. More to the point for what we're gonna talk about today, he said that there's approximately 816. If they multiply the amount that they can see by the amount that should be in there, they have 816. They think there might be a few more hidden ones in there. So between 816 and 828 4680 battery cells in this standard range Model Y, which has a rated range of 279 miles or 449 kilometers. All right, so we're looking at 800 116 to 828 battery cells. The next piece of evidence we need is from the limiting factor and inside EVs that did a report on this. And we're going to look at this table right here that shows that we're looking at an energy density of somewhere around 272 to 296 watt hours per kilogram. And the cells are about 355 grams each. So if we now bust out the calculator, we can say 272 watt hours per kilogram times 0.355 kilograms per cell gives us about 96 and a half watt hours of capacity per cell, which is very close to the estimated 98 watt hours of capacity that has been rumored around for the 4680 generation one cell. Now, future generations, generation two and generation three, I think each of those is gonna get about 10% more than the last version did. So eventually this number is gonna go up, but let's call it 97 to sort of split the difference at this point. So we'll call it 97 watt hours per cell times, let's take the low end number, 816 cells gives us that. And of course that is 79,152 or 79 or call it very close to 80 kilowatt hours per battery pack. Now, if we bump that up to 828 instead, you can see that we're slightly over 80 kilowatt hours. And of course, if you go up to the 296 watt hours per kilogram, which is higher, you know, we can play around with this number. But what we're looking at here is something really close to 80 kilowatt hours of battery pack capacity. How does that compare to the long range Model Y from Fremont? Well, let's just take a look right here. We've got 74 kilowatt hours of battery pack capacity, and that has a rated range of 326 miles. So we're looking at 279 miles with an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack versus 326 miles with a 74 kilowatt hour battery pack, and something doesn't seem quite right here. So just to give us a guesstimation, if we take 80 and divide it by 74, we get 1.08, and then we multiply that times 326 miles, 
and we get 352 miles, so call it 350 miles of range. It seems like the standard range Model Y from Texas should actually be rated somewhere on the order of 350 miles, not 272 miles. And this of course backs up the theory that they are sandbagging this Model Y right now. The problem that they are having, of course, is the Osborne effect. If you announce a new product that's way, way better than the old product, but you can't make the new product, at least not in significant quantities yet, and the 4680 is still ramping up, so they're only able to make something like a thousand of these cars, I think, per month right now. It might be accelerating a little bit, but that's not meeting anything like the demand, so they can create a lot more 2170-based long-range model-wise out of Fremont and also out of Texas now as well, and they can build those much, much faster in much larger quantities. The problem is nobody's going to want to buy that. If you say like, hey, we've got the single motor version, and yeah, it's only single motor, so that's not as exciting, but it's got a range that's 8% higher or 350 miles as opposed to 326 from the Fremont made Model Y. And of course, it's got all the latest and greatest structural battery pack, all of those kind of things. People are going to be much more likely to want to wait to purchase that vehicle instead of purchasing the Fremont made Model Y. So what do you do? You kind of sandbag the numbers for a while. You say 279, you just cut it off, software limit it so that it, the batteries aren't being utilized that much and you can say that the range is lower. Of course, Tesla can excuse this by saying this is new battery technology technology and they don't want to push it too far. They don't know exactly how well these batteries will do over time and under stress, so they need to keep it limited. But in my mind, what we're looking at is something that over time, as Tesla wishes to, they can, you know, incrementally every software update just give a little bit more. So instead of 279 miles, next time it's like 290, and then it can creep up to 300 or something. So basically, as they can make more of these vehicles, they can increase the range of the vehicle. And people who already own these vehicles, will get more range as well, which is a great bonus to them. But essentially Tesla, by playing with the software limitation on these battery cells, can easily just balance this teeter-totter, right? <laughs> they can take the seesaw and they can say, which one do we want people to be buying more of? How much do we charge for it? How much range do we claim? And they can keep moving this thing and manipulating these levers until eventually when the 4680 battery cell version Model Y is the big one and they can make the performance version and all that stuff, then all of a sudden they can claim it's got 350 miles of range, which is longer than the long range Model Y 2170, and they can charge more money for it. So they don't even have to change the battery pack. All they have to do is just upgrade the thing via software over time, and it'll look better and better as they want it to. Now, of course, you could say this is kind of dirty pool that they're playing right now, and what they should be doing is giving away the entire range all at once. But again, this is very new technology, so there probably is some legitimacy to them at this point limiting things so that they're not charging up to 100% all the time and draining it all the time and things like that. They want to make sure these batteries behave well over time and under real world usage. So there is a fairly decent reason for them to be cutting this range to some extent. Also, these are all estimates and everything. So maybe there's something in there that's incorrect about that, but we're starting to get pretty definitive answers here, right? Monroe has torn down the beginnings of this battery pack and they're actually starting to count the number of cells. So that's a pretty real measure. And then of course the limiting factor, which is really, really really good at this kind of stuff has done a very good job of breaking down how many watt hours are in each cell. So I think we're getting pretty close to the exact numbers here and it really does seem like if they've got 816 plus battery cells in the standard range Model Y out of Texas, that that thing actually has a much bigger potential range than what they're saying right now. So will this change anybody's mind right now? I don't know. It's unlikely that most people will even know about this. Most people won't even know what batteries are inside their car as they get them. The standard range is a little bit cheaper right now because it's only got a single motor and stuff. So, you know, there's all of these other levers that they're pulling to try to balance this. But Tesla is also trying to avoid the Osborne effect. And they're working really hard to make sure that the Fremont made and now Texas made model wise with the 2170 cells are still competitive. So I think we're gonna be looking at a couple of years here until the 4680 battery cell really comes into its own. And especially when we get to generation two and generation three of the cell chemistry and the cell construction. But in the meantime, I have a feeling anybody who's got the 4680 standard range model Y out of Texas is going to get nice surprises over time where they're going to get little incremental bumps in terms of their range. 
For anybody who does have the standard range Model Y right now, I would be really interested if you'd let me know how the range drops off at the beginning. So, you know, the 326 mile range on our Model Y immediately started to go down over the first couple of months because it lost a little bit of range off the top. If you're not seeing that happen so much with the 4680 battery cell, like if it said 279 on day one and after two or three months of usage, it still is like 279, that's a pretty strong indicator that it's like a software limitation and not the battery chemistry itself. So I'd be really interested to know, definitely let me know in the comments if you do own a 4680 based Model Y and whether the range has actually started to go down as predicted or whether it stayed pretty consistent. In the meantime, this is all just stuff to keep an eye on for now. We'll have to wait for another few months and after Sandy Monroe's complete teardown and some other factors and stuff to really dig into these numbers and make sure that they're absolutely correct. But I think it's worth at least noting the fact that this could be going on right now and that there could actually be a lot more energy in these cars than people think. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.